Greetings Law Seekers and welcome to this bonus episode of The Lost Archives. More Star Wars Legends Law. And continuing on from the theme of the previous episode, it's time to talk about the Mighty Rancor. A large carnivorous repto mammal native originally to the planet of Daphne, although this was eventually exported via various means or accidents to various other worlds around the galaxy. Now this did mean it did create several sub-variants of the species, which I will go into in a later video. In fact, thinking about it, I will probably do two additional videos due to there being natural evolutions of the Rancor and unnatural evolutions of the Rancor caused by various things such as Sith alchemy or exposures to weird environments that aren't natural. But for today, we shall continue talking about the default Rancor. So, as I previously said, they are originally from the planet Daphomir, which the Daphomiri Rancors are said to be the strongest and the tallest of all Rancors, with some low base intelligence as well. Granted, this does mean they are still susceptible to some of the weaves of the Night Sisters. I'll probably have to do a video on that later. But swiftly moving on. So, in default, the main species of Rancor can range from between 5 meters minimum at an average height to about 19 meters at their maximum. They would weigh about 1,650 kilograms. That is that the 5 meter height with the variants of the species weighing a hell of a lot more. Their skin colour would range from browns to dark browns, although depending on environmental effects this could change, similar to how it was with the Reek, although diet did not play a role in this. The subspecies of Rancor did have a range of different colours as well, but as I said, I'll go into that in its own video. Now the main armament of the Rancor is obviously its maw, its long arms and its claws which uh, you have seen used to devastating effects in um, Return of the Jedi when the Gamorrean was attempting to flee. Well, it didn't take long for the Rancor to make a meal out of him. Swiftly picking him up and then dropping him into his maw. All the while that poor little Gamorrean was screaming. Ah, poor Luke, you just couldn't do anything but watch. One thing making this equally difficult with the Rancors is actually their leathery lunk skin is able to resist blaster bolts and so this means that any spacer with a regular firearm is pretty much screwed when it comes to facing a rancor and if it gets a hold of you well yeah uh, being a humanoid you're usually small enough not to have to worry about the teeth but it will swallow you whole not an experience that I'd exactly like to live myself the Sarlacc's bad enough. So the Rancor would walk around on two relatively small stumpy legs. It'd use its long forearms for catching prey and at times would walk on all fours if it needed to. Now its balance was maintained by a short tail. This tail only served for the purpose of balance and did not help in anything else really when it came to movement. You won't be getting Rancor swinging from trees, which is probably for the better because that would be utterly terrifying. Now, these creatures were incredibly useful to a lot of people around the galaxy. The Di Diaphemeri witches would tame these creatures and use them as war mounts, or e and some would even keep them as pets. For example, Jabba kept one as a pet and as a pit fighting animal used for entertainment. But it doesn't stop there, as the teeth of Rancors can actually be used to make the hilts of lightsabers, there being such high grade that it can be used as part of a hilt for a lightsaber. But it didn't stop there, the skin could be used to make vests and shoes and various other things out of leather um, and basically make at least some sort of armour if you tan the leather properly. As you know, it is um, blaster proof, which Granted, this did mean that boots and vests out made out of Rancor skin was extremely expensive. But it also goes as far as the meat of it is considered a delicacy at some places. 
Granted, I am not about to line up and um, try and uh, eat one of them. But uh, moving backly onto the creature's characteristics, the Rancor had good night vision, so it was more of an effective hunter at night. However, during the day, its sight was not as sharp as a human's in daylight. So they did suffer from some negative effects while trying to hunt during the day. Granted, this would be enough that you could also run away if you needed to. Now, the Rancors did have a symbiotic relationship with gibbet birds. Now, these creatures would clean their teeth and this would allow the, you know, the birds to get food from whatever the Rancor had eaten and it would provide the Rancor with that much needed uh, dental hygiene in order to keep its teeth from decaying over time. Now I shall move on to the reproduction method. So male and female Rancors are attracted to one another by smell or pheromones. Now they would mate and then from this several young would be produced usually about two at a time now some sources claim that they have live young give birth to live young or give birth to eggs and this particular video i'm gonna go with the eggs as i have read some sources that favor that more often than not now the two hatchlings would stay with the mother and she would look after them for a while but it is known that the mother when hungry would eat her own children so it's definitely not a good idea for the uh, you know the young rancors to stick around for too long in case mummy gets hungry now usually the rank the two would be on the mother's back there'd be one dorsal and one ventral and usually this would at least they'd stay there until reaching um, at least early maturity if mum didn't get hungry <laughs> so the unmodified rancor or unevolved or unadapted to its environment rancor would exist in various places around the galaxy this would include places like Felucia, Lethon and Cardia now these species hadn't really needed to change much due to their planet's environment. They in fact very much thrived in these environments. There were some sub variants that did develop in say Felucia, but they'll get their own separate video. Anyway guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you did please consider giving me a like down below, maybe a comment, and if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, maybe consider sharing this around as well as it helps the channel grow and uh, we can talk more Star Wars lore and material. As always, my sources will be listed in the description down below, and I will catch you on the next episode of The Lost Archives. I'm considering doing a, another super weapon video for, for the uh, next one, or perhaps another galactic zoology. Depending on uh, if you guys want to see either one, maybe leave that down in the comments. But as always, take care, have a good day, and may the lawkeepers ever be in your favour.